I'm Rick Foster. Welcome to Rick Uncorked 365. Well, I'm hoping that you're enjoying this YouTube channel as much as I am enjoying creating it. Now, as you know, this is the channel where I taste a different wine or champagne each day for 365 days. Yes, that's right. That means I'm tasting 365 wines throughout the year. And I want to thank everyone for reaching out to me, for subscribing to my YouTube channel, follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Tumblr. I want to thank you for all your support, encouragement, and your comments. I also want to thank a lot of the winemakers and wineries who have been reaching out to me with suggestions on their wines to taste. As you know, I am um, self-funded, so the wineries are not supplying me with wines. I'm actually going to the grocery store, doing my own shopping, and purchasing the wines on my own that I'll be trying. As I mentioned before in my previous segments, the wine industry is a half a trillion dollar worldwide industry. And most of that revenue is created from the lower end wines, not necessarily from the higher priced wines, but from the lesser priced wines. So I tend to sample a lot more of the wines under $20 range. And today we have a unique wine. It is Prime Cut 55. And, you know, just like any other industry, some wines make it, some wines fail. And it's not necessarily because of the quality of the wine. Sometimes it just has to do with the marketing or with securing, you know, or procuring the grapes from the various growers. Or somebody just is tired of being a winemaker or they lose their, you know, valued winemaker expert and they fold. Prime Cuts 55 has been around for a while. They are um, a... I believe a contract um, bottling company. They're producing the wine under this label. They have a website um, listed on their label of primecut55sellers.com. However, when I went to that site, it popped up a women's clothing sale company. So it's obviously a website that no longer is in existence. The bottle we're going to taste today is Prime Cut 55 Pinot Noir Central Coast 2017. So it's fairly recent on the market, so I'm surprised the label has a non-working website. It also has a Facebook post or a Facebook logo on the label, and I tried to go, go to Facebook and I can't find their uh, winery or their market on Facebook either. So I believe this is a discontinued wine label. Now, what attracted me to purchasing this wine? It was on sale at Stater Brothers for 40% off. So I got it for $7.70. It's normally a $15 bottle. And it is marketed strictly for the meat lover. And that's what they claim on their label is that they market, market it to meat lovers and that they produce or claim to produce a very bold and rich wine that pairs well with prime ribs, with um, you know heavy steaks, turkey even. But I wanted to give it a try because on the label they make a lot of claims about their flavor the, and the notes that they're able to achieve in the wine. And one is a unique um, note that I'm not familiar with in, in some of the, in the wines that I've been tasting, and that's thyme and spices for meats. I don't know if I've had a wine that had a note of thyme, thyme or thyme, thyme. Um, so I wanted to give this a try. Now this is a Central Coast Pinot Noir, and I am expecting to, to have um, some blueberry, blackberry, strawberry, and um, cherry notes, especially the strawberries. Pinot Noir Central Central Coast is known for producing a easily achieved note of strawberry. So I'm, I'm expecting that. I'm gonna give this a try and I will let you know what I think. Now, 
that has a very strong note of strawberry. They've achieved that typical Pinot Noir strawberry note in that flavor. However, I'm tasting spice. I'm not necessarily, I wouldn't necessarily say that I'm tasting or can, can actually pinpoint the thyme, um, the thyme um, spice in that. But it does have a unique spice note to it. So it's, it's, it's possible that it could be the note of, of thyme. I'm, I'm not 100% I'm not uh, sold on that. However, for me, it is a very light um, Pinot Noir. And reading the label and expecting bold flavors of the, you know, um, cherry and the blackberries and a, a, a note of some heavier uh, Pinot mixed with that light um, strawberry note, I was expecting it to be a little bit more forward, a little bit bolder um, of, a, of a taste. It's actually pretty light and it's actually very dominant on that strawberry note. So it's relying heavily on that light strawberry note within the Pinot Noir grape. However, it does have some nice spices on the back end. Uh, for me, it is a little, a little too light to go with a, uh, with a prime rib or a hearty steak. After giving that a few tastes, I can see that that actually pairing well with a nice roasted um, turkey um, or perhaps a duck. But it does have that strawberry note. It's not sweet. It actually is a very dry, light uh, Pinot Noir. Um, if for seven dollars, I can't I can't complain. I still prefer other Pinot Noirs over this, such as the La Crema. But for seven dollars and seventy cents when it was on sale. Um, it's not a bad find. Anyways, I hope you'll stay tuned for our next segment where we'll have some other wines we'll be tasting and hopefully some more bolder flavors and tastes that I'll be able to describe and tell you about. Thanks again for hitting the bell and being notified of upcoming uh, premiere and bonus segments and look forward to seeing our next segment. Cheers.